Hi everyone, I'm Cody W3AMG with Bridgecom Systems. Hope you all are doing well. In today's live stream, we are going to be showing you how to take your AnyTone radio uh, from scratch and program it without using a computer. Uh, we get asked this question all the time, and in fact, uh, at the show, at Hamcation, we had a lot of people come up and had the question of, hey, how do I add the repeater in? I don't have my computer on me. And so we helped them there on the spot uh, as much as we could, although it was really busy. But I want to show you all uh, who maybe haven't had the opportunity to learn that, how, it, how it's done, and some things to watch out for along the way. So before we get into it, uh, a couple quick announcements. First of all, I want to thank all of you who came by the booth at Hamcation. It was great to meet all of you folks. Uh, met a lot of photos, a lot of people, and even had some people want to take photos with me. So it was kind of a, a neat experience there. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Uh, had a great time at Hamcation, beautiful weather down there too. So we're, we're back up in the, uh, it's actually warm today in Missouri. So let's get into it. I've got my radio here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is find out what repeater we want to connect to. So in my case, uh, I need to have a look at my local area. Now, a couple ways to do that. What I like to do is go to repeaterbook.com. Uh, it's a great resource. You can find uh, the local repeaters there. Uh, now, if you don't have access to that, a, a computer or internet, what you can do is actually just ask around at your local club or any of your buddies in the ham radio. They will probably have that information. But in this case, we're going to use a computer here. So I'm going to go to repeaterbook.com. Oops. Repeaterbook.com. Here we go. Give that a second here. And the information we're going to be looking for is a receive and transmit frequency. Those are also going to be known as the uplink and downlink frequency. And then we'll either get, if it's a, a, an analog repeater, we're going to be looking for PL tones or, or CT, CTCSS tones, something like that. Or if it's digital, you're going to be looking for color code and time slot. Uh, now, time slot, they may have some information on what talk groups to use for what time slot. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get this to pull up, repeaterbook.com. Let's see if any website's working. Make sure we have internet access. Oop. Let's see. It doesn't look, looks like I'm having some internet troubles here. Oh, no. Well. Uh, repeaterbook.com is a great resource. If that pulls up, we'll use it. If not, uh, we're just going to continue on as if we had the information. So I luckily already have written down that information from repeaterbook.com. So you'll go there and you'll search, you know, North American repeaters and then find your specific location. And then from there, you want the uplink and downlink frequencies. Now let me explain what those do. On the radio, it's going to be asking for a receive and transmit frequency. Now uplink and downlink uh, you can get a little bit confused which one's which, receive or transmit, because that's going to depend if you're talking about a repeater or a radio, which one's going to be which. So uplink and downlink completely simplify that. The way I like to think about it is repeaters are always up high. They're on a tower. Uh, you generally have a tower with a repeater, so that's going to be up high. And then radios are typically on a person down on the ground. So radios are usually lower than repeaters. So if it's uplink, that means it's going from the radio to the repeater. And if it's downlink, going from the repeater down to the radio. So from the radio's perspective, uplink is going to be transmit and downlink is going to be receive. Uh, and if you remember that analogy, you'll always be able to figure out which one's which. Awesome. So uh, we have our information for the frequencies. So the first thing we're going to do on the radio uh, is go into menu. Now you can adjust like your backlight times and everything. It's a good idea to do that. Uh, that way you can, can stay looking at it without having a timeout on you. So we're going to scroll down here to settings in the menu. Once you're there, we're going to go to first, I'm going to do radio set and just change my display. Yeah, the backlight time. Uh, oops. That way it doesn't time out on us here. So we'll just change that to always. And then I think we can change the menu exit time as well. Extend that. That way it'll be easier to work with this. It's not going to time out on us. Perfect. 
Now at this point, you can go back in the menu. We'll go down to settings. And you're going to go to channel set. Now at this point, you can add uh, your DMR ID uh, in here. So let's go find where we would add that. So we're going to scroll down. There we go, name. So we'll click on that. Oops. It looks like we're in a VFO channel. We'll have to get out of VFO. So I'm going to go back out to the menu here and press P2. If it's a, a default configured radio, you should be able to press P2, get out of VFO. We'll go back in the menu, settings, channel set, and we'll scroll down here until we find that name option again. There we go. Oops. Channel one, maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. I think there's another option here. So we'll, we'll do that here in a second. So first, what we're going to do is change. Uh, this is set up as a analog channel right now. So if we click on channel type, you can see either analog or digital. Now, if it's analog, which in this case, we're not using the analog repeater, but if it is, uh, you'll be able to set your tones. So these here, the, all these three options are for your tones. Uh, some repeaters have a receive tone, some have a transmit tone, and some have both. And sometimes they're different and sometimes they're the same. So this is your transmit and that's your receive tone. Uh, so you can see the, the R and the T. And then this down here changes them both at once. Uh, so if you click on that, you can turn it on. Then you can set your tone, right? So today we're going to be using a digital channel. So we can, we can forget about that. Change it over to digital. And we'll have some different options here. So the receive and transmit frequency. So first off, with the receive frequency, we'll set that. So just click delete. And at this point, let's check out our frequency. So receive is going to be downlink, so that is 444-4625. Awesome, there we go. And transmit. So we'll delete that out of here. And that is 449-4625, our uplink. 449-4625. And you can hit the pound key down here. Just hit that pound key, and it will actually complete that for you. Like that. There we go. Confirm. We can back out. Awesome. So we've got that set. Uh, now we should be able to... There we go. Radio ID. Uh, it's not going to give you that option in analog mode like we were earlier. So we can take this here and enter our ID. So if we go into My Radio, uh, you can then click Option and edit the name. So we'll edit the ID first. Uh, so my ID is 3152688. So we'll do Delete and 31... Oops. Three one five two six eight eight, and confirm. We'll go down to edit name. Delete this out of here. Give it a name real quick. There we go. And I usually just do the first name. And call sign. There we go. Awesome, just like that. You can click confirm. And at this point, you can save. And that should already be selected because it's the standard one, but just go ahead and select it as well. There we go. Awesome. And you can add multiple IDs in here and then select the one you want to use. So if you're using uh, this with multiple people, you can have multiple people's IDs in here. If, if two people are going to be using the radio at different times. Awesome, so we can back out here. Uh, now let's keep going down, color code and time slot. Now this will depend on, uh, potentially on, on what you're setting this up for. So the color code, I know the color code for this repeater is going to be color code four. So I'm going to select that. Now the time slot uh, is going to be time slot 1 for most of the talk groups. So we're going to select time slot 1. 
Uh, now, repeater book may have some specifics on what talk groups that's for, but unfortunately, that, that wasn't able to pull up today. Uh, there we go. And at this point, we're pretty much set. There's a few other things you want to check. One of those being DMR mode. It's at the very bottom. Make sure DMR mode is set to repeater. If it's set to simplex, you will run into trouble. Awesome. So we are all set here. Now, we could start using it like this, but we actually want to save this to our radio uh, because otherwise you may as well just use your VFO mode. So if we actually do click new channel, now it's a little bit backwards. When I first started this, I thought, oh, new channel, then I'll enter my information. You do it the other way around. So we just entered everything. Now we're going to do a new channel. And this is the channel number that it's going to store in the list. Doesn't mean much, just click confirm. You don't need to change that. Um, and then at this point, we're going to give it a name. This is what's going to be displayed in your zone. Awesome, there we go. So. Uh, let's change this. Uh, what do we want to name this? L let's set this up for the parrot. We'll add in the parrot talk group here in a second. Oops. There we go. Click confirm. And you will have to add it to a zone. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to add it to zone one, the, the standard zone. Now you can create more zones. Uh, you do have to add your channel to a zone. You have to have at least some channels to create a zone, so which you should have off the bat. So there we go. Select. And then talk group. Uh, we will have to select a talk group for this, it looks like. Uh, but we can, we can change that here. So we're going to select that for now. Talk group list, okay. There we go. Saving channel. Awesome, so we should be set here. Now, if we want to create our talk group, uh, now see at this point, we're not gonna see the name because we still have our radio set to show frequency. So we'll fix that real quick. Go in the menu and we're gonna go down to settings, radio set, display function, and we'll go down here and change. Let me see what it's called. I know I wrote it down. Uh, it's going to be called, yeah, change the ch.name, so the channel name for frequency to channel. Oops. Yep, so this right here, number three. So we'll change that to channel, just like that. Now when we look at our home screen, we're actually going to see our name, so channel one. So uh, oops, looks like our name didn't go through all the way there. Interesting. Unless we need to change the, there it is. So to rotate the channel, there we go. Channel one or uh, parrot in zone one. There we go. So, but we don't have a talk group assigned to it yet. So let's go create our talk group. So click on menu and then click talk group. Now, if this is an analog repeater, keep in mind the process is a little bit easier. Uh, it's going to be easier to do this if it's just a simple analog repeater. You import, input your frequencies, you're good to go. Same thing if you already have all the talk groups and you just travel to a different state and want to set one up, bam, bam, put your frequencies in, pick your talk group and you're up and running. Uh, it will take a little bit longer if you're inputting the talk group too, but it's not too difficult. So that's what we're showing you here. So here we go. Here's our talk group list. Now this is a brand new radio. Uh, I just reset it so we don't have really anything in there. So we're going to do a new contact. So we want to input the ID. Now here is where a lot of people go wrong with this. So it's going to automatically do a private ID. Now this is great uh, and it'll work for the parrot, but if you wanted to input a different talk group, like a statewide talk group, for example, that's not going to work. So you want to hit the pound key and that will change that to talk group ID. So make sure you remember to hit that pound key based on what you want. Now we're okay with a private ID today, but if we want to input pretty much any other talk group, you're going to want to change that to a talk group ID. So the parrot is uh, 9990, click confirm, and then we'll give it a name. So we'll the same thing here, parrot. There we go, confirm, 
and then uh, we should be set. So you can just, at this point, we should be able to hit save. So just go ahead and save, saving contact. And now we are good to go. So we're on our screen here. Now at this point, all you gotta do is go into talk group and talk group list and find our talk group here, pair it, select that, and then go down to select contact. And we should be set. So if I key this up now, uh, we'll, uh, we probably won't be able to reach it because the repeater is a little ways away. Uh, but if I was to key this up, you can see parrot 9990 testing. This is W3AMG. Can I hit the parrot? We can see it, it shows up there. It's a private call going to the parrot. So it totally worked. Uh, now, it may or may not get anything back because uh, we have trouble hitting that from in the studio. Um, let's see here. Nope, doesn't look like it. Uh, but there we go. So it's all set up. Uh, it's really pretty simple. Now, if you want to add more, you basically just do the same thing. Uh, you can add your, add your channel and then create your talk group. So once we have one, uh, probably what you'd want to do is create a bunch of talk groups and then go in and create a bunch of channels. And just keep in mind, once you create your channel, just remember to go uh, select it and then go into the talk group menu and select the talk group for it. Uh, that way you're actually talking to the proper talk group. Now, if we have more than one, keep in mind that for a digital repeater, we won't want to add a disconnect talk group. That allows us to disconnect from whatever we talk to and connect to something else. That's going to be talk group number 4,000. Uh, awesome, there we go. Let me try it over here. No guarantees we'll be able to hit the parrot, but I'll try it a little closer to the window. This is Cody W3AMG testing out the parrot. W3AMG, testing out the Parrot. There we go, how cool is that? So it is up and operational. Uh, we're all good there, that's the local repeater. Uh, that, how cool is that? It worked, awesome. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you learned something from today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell next to it. To make sure you don't miss out on any more great content. That's all I have for you today. I'm Cody, W3AMG, 7-3.